Brewery is going to be closed to uh, Thanksgiving. How do I get it bigger? Okay, we're recording. And we're going to start, and hopefully people will start. Uh, continue but to I join. can't do it on there, right? Um, I'm going to mute everyone. Are you in here at all? No, that's you. Oh, yeah. The other way. Can I just put it Edward's on? iPad. Okay. I assume. Does it say Edward? It says Edward. All right. A couple of people are connecting, but we need everyone to mute. Am I muted? No. Whoever just asked, am I muted, is not muted. Oh. Can you see it? Did I just get So whoever, whoever asked, are you still yeah. muted, or you're still not muted. So whoever that, I can't see it, or else I would uh, need to. Edward's iPad. Uh, they're, they're muted now. Thank you. I, I still, someone still, and for some reason I can't find them. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get started. Uh, welcome to another one of our cooking webinars from our uh, affinity group. These have been very popular, and it's nice to see you getting a good turnout once again. Tonight we are featuring, featuring the world famous chef and also Federation of Jewish Men's Club International President, Tom Sudo. And Tom is going to uh, make us a brisket right in time. Well, we're actually doing a couple different briskets, you'll see. Couple of different briskets. Uh, just the time for the high holidays. So I will remind everyone, please, uh, please keep yourself on mute. If you have a question, send it through the chat and I will filter those questions through. Um, these have become our, our, I've lost track on how many of these we've had. We actually have another one scheduled for Wednesday, October 7th, which is during the uh, holiday of Sukkot, the, one of the intermediate days uh guy out of california his name is ben so that uh and then we have a, a few more lined up after that so this is becoming a regular event very very exciting to have this so without further ado i'm going to turn it over to the world famous chef tom sudo why are you in trouble um so what i thought i would do tonight is begin by talking a little bit about what brisket is probably the quintessential jewish delicacy I said it with a smile on my face. Um, I'm gonna, I have a video that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna play uh, that will show the making of one of the briskets and then I'm gonna do uh, the preparation for the second brisket here. Brisket is not something you can do in 45 minutes. It's actually done right. It goes over a couple of days. So first of all, what is a brisket? So it's not what a moral carries to a, to a circumcision. So a brisket is a tough, rich chest muscle, uh, often used in barbecue, corned beef, and pastrami. It comes, if you look at it, from the front part of the cow, right above the front legs. Uh, does it come from the left side or the right side? There's some theories about the way the cow sleeps to where the muscles come from, but it's that piece of meat. So it, it, is, a, it is a tougher piece of meat. Uh, when it's taken out, it comes out with the ribs and the bones, uh, and, then, and then that is cut back to what's called the deckel. The deckel is the full uh, brisket. Uh, most of us don't order a deckel. Most of us get, 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 it, uh, get it cut or get it butchered uh, before it comes to us. But that, so the bones are taken out, and then you've got, you've got what's called the deckel. So on the deckel, the, the left-hand side of the screen is what we commonly call today, what we see as a brisket. There's a first cut and a second cut. The first cut is less fatty than the second cut. The second cut tends to be thicker. And then at the We're end, not seeing your slides. We're still stuck on the front first slide. That's, is that everybody? Yes. Why don't you see? I don't see any slides. 
Yes, actually, we just eat brisket one-on-one, Tom. No slides here at all. Zip slide. Okay. What about now? Yeah, no. that's better. That's, now that's we have good. what is yeah. brisket? The right, so rich chest. You to enable the uh, thing you did. So the brisket again is the front part of the, the cow, right above the legs. Um, as I mentioned, the deckle is what the whole brisket is called. You carve away the, the ribs and the breastbone. So if you get beef ribs, that's taken out before the brisket is made. Then we get to the with the full deckle, the full piece of brisket. The left hand side of the screen is the uh, what we would no normally call our brisket today. It's a first and second cut. First cut's closer to the left end, then you go to the middle, which is more of the second cut. And then as you get to the end, it's brisket points. Brisket points is a delicacy for those people who uh, smoke. It, you, you smoke, you, you really, it's called the burnt ends. And that's what you would do with, 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 a, with, with brisket points. Um, some people will use brisket points for corned beef, particularly around St. Patrick's Day. It's a fattier piece of meat. And with corned beef and cabbage, sometimes that works well. So in the end, uh, beef brisket is taken from the, the right section of the steer. It is best if it has an internal temperature of 195 to 200. And the best thing to do it with brisket, because it is fatty, is to cook it over a period of time, two to three hours minimum to get to that level. So low and slow. Um, if, again, you can make it in the corned beef, pastrami, smoked brisket, Jewish pot roast, and now even pho in the, uh, uh, in, in the Vietnamese community. And I mentioned that there, there are two sections which are leaner. The first cut uh, is a little bit leaner, uh, and the second cut is a little bit fattier. But when you start to break it down, you'll, a lot of that fat will, will, will move away. All right, are there any questions about what brisket is? Again, it is a muscle, it is fatty, so you can't cook it for a long period of time. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I prepared, so I don't know if everybody's received the, uh, um, wait, I'll get out of here. I don't, I don't know if everybody's, everybody's received the recipes. Uh, over, over the last, can you make sure you turn on that? Over the uh, uh, last Thursday and Friday, I prepared a very simple brisket called a Coca-Cola brisket. Three ingredients, very easy, and here's how you make it. Today we're doing Mr. Brisket's Coca-Cola brisket. First thing you need is a brisket. This is a first cut brisket, but it can be a first or second cut. You're gonna put it in the pan with the fat side up. Always have the fat side up. There are three ingredients to this mix. First, there's onion soup mix. Come over your bowl. Cut the top. Oop, take that out. Pour in your onion soup mix. Next ingredient is chili sauce. You can also use barbecue sauce, but we're using chili sauce. So you can get it out. A whole bottle of chili sauce. And then your last ingredient is Coca-Cola. Original tasting Coke, or new Coke, whatever they call it today, it has to be Coca-Cola with sugar in it. This is about 20 ounces. I'm gonna probably use between 12 to 16 ounces in here. Doesn't have to be real precise. Go with that amount. We're gonna stir it up. Make sure it all mixes together nice and well. Fizzy. Here we go. We're stirring it all up. Get the Coca Cola, the onion soup, 
and the chili sauce all mixed together. Then simply pour it over the meat. So it covers the meat. Now push it down a little bit. Cover it up. And you can let that sit for about an hour or so if you wanted to. So, or you can go right into the oven. If you let it sit for a little bit longer at room temperature, it will absorb more of the flavor. It doesn't really make a difference. I preheated my oven to 325 degrees. I do this on convection. Um, you can do it on roast. But con roast convection does it the best. It sat for a little while. I now take some aluminum foil. Once you got a top to your pot, cover it up. Seal it down. There we go. The, the oven is preheated. We're going in on the lower level. We're closing it up. And we're gonna set our timer for about three hours and check it in about three hours. So you'll wait and you take a look at it, but I'll use a meat thermometer when it gets to 200 degrees uh, internally, it's done. If you don't have a meat thermometer, you put, you put a fork in and a fork out. As long as you're not getting any uh, friction on the fork, it is also done. You don't want to cook it too little, you don't want to cook it uh, too much. So we'll check, check back in a couple of hours and see where we stand. Okay, I'm now going to check. It's been three hours. I'm going to check the brisket. It smells excellent. I take my meat thermometer, I insert it, I'm looking for something around right between 200 and 210, and we are there. But you can also see me pulling it out, it comes in and out really easily. That's that. I will now let it rest for an, a couple of hours, for an hour or two, and then we'll go off from there. Now that our brisket is cooled, we're going to put it over here for a second. Our pan is filled with juice, and we're going to pour the juice into a container. Slowly but surely. Close up our container here. We're going to put our brisket back in, put it in the refrigerator for the night, and then tomorrow we'll take it out, carve it, and warm it back up. So we've sliced the brisket against the grain. We've put it back into the pan. We've taken our sauce, which has also been there and been in the refrigerator. We're going to open it up, and you'll see that there's fat on top of it. I'm going to take a slotted spoon, come over to the sink, and I'm going to take the top, the fat, the fat off the top. Take it off in one lump sum. Is that great? There we go. And then I'm taking this, the rest of the juice, and pouring it over the top of the meat, and we'll put the meat back in the oven at about you know, 300. Now there's a little piece of fat there, so we're gonna take it off. We put the meat back in the oven to warm at about 325, and that'll that'll warm it up for the next uh, about a half hour or so. Okay, it's now been rewarmed, and it's now time to plate. So we take out some. The sauce is already on it, and you kind of put it on the platter. Good, because the sauce is right there. Nice and tender. It's now time to enjoy. Potato bone.
So that, that is a Coca-Cola brisket. It is very simple. Um, it's best if you can make it over two days so that you can get, allow the fat to come up, render the fat, plus you get, more, you get more flavor. Somebody asked the question about browning the meat. You don't need to do that. In some recipes you do, in some recipes you don't. In this particular recipe, you do not need to brown the meat. It's a simple recipe and the, and the brisket comes out phenomenal. And it's, as you can see, three ingredients and easy. It's a recipe that was perfected by, by, uh, by the Hirschgut family in Cleveland. And they run a company called Mr. Brisket and they do thousands of these a year. So, uh, and I was able to take a class with Mr. Brisket last year and learn, learn some, of the, some of the trade secrets. So that's the simple brisket. Now, there, I, in, in what I sent out, which I'm not gonna make, there's a variation on that theme. Uh, you use the same onion soup mix. You can use a can of whole cranberry sauce, a half a cup of ketchup, and one can of ginger ale. Uh, you mix together the onion soup, the cranberry, and the ketchup. You preheat your oven to 450. You sit on this one, you sear the meat for about 15 minutes. You remove it from the, you remove it from the oven and lower the temperature to 350. You pour the mixture, the mixture of ingredients over the top, and you cover the rest with ginger ale. You cover and roast for about two and a half hours or until done again, until you have that internal temperature. Take it out, let it sit for a little bit, let it cool. Once cooled, remove the liquid, the same thing we did with the, with the Coca-Cola brisket. Place it into a container, put the meat back in, in, the, in the pan, put it on the refrigerator and let it cool for the, for the, day, for about a, for the, day, for the night. The next day you take it out, remove the briskets, Slice the brisket up, like always against the grain, um, and then take the liquid out, take the fat off the top of the liquid, pour the liquid back over, over, the, over the brisket, and you can cook it. Again, very easy. The toughest thing about doing with a brisket is make sure that you do not overcook it. So you wanna make sure that you're checking the temperature. If you overcook it, you get sawdust. Um, so Mr. Brisket told the story that he, he's not supposed to, but some people make their brisket at home and they'll bring it back to him in his store and he will cut, cut it on the, on the meat cutter. Um, and a woman came in, looks like we froze. Okay. Uh, a woman came in and said, and he looked at, he looked at the brisket and said, ma'am, this brisket is, is burnt. Um, and she said, she said to Mr. Brisket, but sir, this is the exact way my mother made it. And he's responded and she used to burn them too, I guess. So if you, book, if you cook them too much, they really turn into sawdust and they're not very good. But slow, slow cooking does it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you without, I'm not gonna put this on a brisket today because I'm gonna, uh, but I'm gonna show you how to make uh, a very sweet brisket recipe. Uh, this, this is a recipe that's actually won awards for my men's club, several awards for my men's club, uh, and it, it includes what you're gonna do with this brisket is you're first gonna make a rub and then you're gonna rub the brisket with the rub. And I'm gonna start, I'll make the rub. Then, it, then you make a barbecue sauce. But you don't cook the meat in the barbecue sauce. The barbecue sauce goes on after you cook the meat. Uh, you let the brisket sit in the rub for about 24 hours. You take it out and then I'll, I'll walk you through the rest of it. So, ready? We're gonna go over so I can, uh, with my handy cameraman here, and we'll show you how you do it. Can everybody still hear me? Can you still hear us? Yeah. All right. Yes. So the first thing is, my men's club has a secret rub. This is the award-winning rub. I'm not teaching you that one. Can't can you see you. Can we switch over to the other Tom Sudo uh, camera? The speaker, the speaker. But we got to. Sorry, one second here. One second here. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Tom, get so my men's club does have a secret rub, uh, which I'm not going to teach because it's a secret rub. But I'm going to go close to it. So for a rub. A rub is, is, is dry ingredients. 
I'm going to start with a quarter cup of paprika. You can use, you can use a smoky paprika. This is a regular paprika. So we can hear you, but not see you. It's not showing up properly. No, I don't know why it's not taking. Okay. So we put a quarter cup of paprika in. We're going to put in three tablespoons of brown sugar. One, two, Three, two tablespoons of salt. How much paprika? Two. Two tablespoons of garlic powder. Tom, um, they want to know how much how much paprika did you just put in? One tablespoon of black pepper. A tablespoon of onion powder. Teaspoon of cumin. A little more in there. I don't like cumin. And then, if you like it hot, this is cayenne pepper. You want to put in a, a teaspoon or more to taste. It's up to you. Uh, if you like it a little bit hotter on the ribs, or on the excuse me, on the brisket, put it in. Put a little bit more. So I'm putting. I'm gonna put in a tablespoon. Okay, that's the rub. So you'll mix that all together. Make sure you break up your brown sugar. So I'm smashing the brown sugar down. Getting it all nice and mixed. And then, which I'm not going to do right now because uh, I'm going to use this over the weekend, is you rub it all, all over your brisket. You take your brisket out and rub it all over the brisket. Then put your brisket into an airtight container and put it in the refrigerator. Again, for about 24 hours. This, I, this kind of, if you're gonna save the rub, make sure you put it in, you wanna use it more than once, make sure you put it into a, an airtight container, which I will do a little bit. Okay, now is the secret sauce. I'm going to start with a half a cup of ketchup. And then I'm going to add to that a half a cup of applesauce. Get it all out. Okay. From there, I'm going to put in two cups of brown sugar. This sauce is sweet. Two cups of brown sugar. Two cups of brown sugar. Next, I'm going to put in six tablespoons. Okay. 
one second. My lemon was not open. I'm going to put in six, six teaspoons of lemon juice. That's three. That's six. Half a teaspoon of salt. a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of paprika, teaspoon of garlic salt, bring out the garlic salt, all right, and some cinnamon. A little bit more than the recipe calls for because we like it. I don't think there's, there's an open one in my cabinet. Sorry about that. All right. Now we're going to mix that all together. We're going to come over to the stove. And we're going to turn on the stove to, I'll start about medium, medium low. And we're, going to, we're going to stir it and stir it constantly to break up the sugar. You want to get this up to a point where the sugar starts to break down. And the, and the sauce starts to form. Sauce can be made a couple days in advance, like I'm doing tonight. No, no problem at all. So while we're heating up the sauce, you you put your rub on 24 hours later and take it out. And here's the secret ingredient. You're going to take the rub, the, the uh, brisket of the rub, put it into a pan. You're going to take some honey brown lager or any kind of honey beer and fill it around the outside. Don't pour it on top because you want to keep the rub on. And you're going to bake it, you're going to cook it in the honey brown lager. So you're going to fill it to about, you know, a half an inch or so around the outside of the brisket. Uh, but this is about a 24 ounce can, about 12 to 14, 16 ounces should, should about do it. Uh, you're going to seal it up. And you're going to put it in the oven again about 325 for a couple of hours, at least two and a half, three hours. You're going to test it. When you're done, take it out. Because of the alcohol, it's going to break down the fat a little bit quicker. So your, um, the brisket's not going to be as solid as you may like. So you want to cool before you take it out. You'll discard the beer. It's not, it's not a gravy. Throw the beer out. And then let it sit for about an hour or so, maybe a little bit more. Uh, then you can put it onto your um, onto a cutting board and cut it at that point, or you can put it in the refrigerator for another day and take it out the next day and cut it at that point in time yeah, against the grain. Once you cut it, you put it back into the, the um, back into the into the into the into the, uh, the pan. Warm it up again to get it back to the temperature. If you want to put a little beer around the outside again, just to, to put to put some uh, liquid in the pan is fine, and you'll serve the. Uh, uh, the barbecue sauce separately. 
Some people will pour the barbecue sauce on top. I like to do it separately. Uh, the barbecue sauce is messy. So if you got a squirt bottle, you can put it in or a spoon. Try, you know, if you slather it over the top of the, uh, of the meat, it's going to get a little messy, particularly on a nice Russian shot of tablecloth. But you're going to have, you're going to have some, some uh, savory with the, uh, with, the, with the brisket because of, of, the, of the rub. And you're going to have some sweet between the beer and the barbecue sauce. So it's a sweet and savory kind of thing. Very really perfect for the, uh, you know, for the holidays. So uh, while, while this is warming up, I'm happy to take any questions that anybody has. If you just if you text them in, we can we can we can try to answer your questions. Hey. Actually, people, are, are there any questions? Text, there's, there are, there is a so Let's figure out what they are. Oh, I want to slice, oh, yeah, I would free, if you're going to freeze the brisket, slice it first. So the grain, um, I don't have a brisket with me, so the grain the grain goes like this across the brisket. So you choose the, if the brisket, a brisket is sort of rectangular, it's the longer way. The grain will normally go like this. Identify your grain before you start putting all your liquids and all your pot and your rub on it, and you can go. But I always carve. So if the grain is this way, you want to carve this way. And carve in thin pieces, as thin as you possibly can. Now, again, the brisket, that I'm, the, set, the last brisket, will have a tendency to fall apart. By the way, it is great as a cold brisket. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is uh, that every recipe I've shown tonight, you can also make an crock pot. How big should a brisket be? Uh, uh, prior to being cooked, figure a half a pound per person. Because a brisket will shrink. Um, it'll shrink, uh, a, a second cut will shrink a little bit more in the first cut because it's got more fat in it. So it's going to shrink. So figure if you're having, like we had, we did the, the Coca-Cola brisket for last Shabbos. There were three of us at the table. Uh, we had enough for that night. We had enough for leftovers. And we had enough for uh, one sandwich after that. So that would have fed about five people. But, and it, by the way, it also, I should also say, that's who you're serving. How, are people big eaters? How much other food do you have? You know, a lot of times we put out a, a lot of food for Rosh Hashanah. We'll have a couple of kugels. We'll have gefilte fish. We'll have chicken soup. We'll have all kinds of salad. You know, so people may not be as hungry by the time the brisket rolls around. So, um, so again, so the, so I, I would, I, you know, I recommend uh, about about a half a pound per person prior to being cooked. What do you serve with? Okay, so in, in the first brisket, the first two briskets, you can actually, and I, I, don't, I, I don't usually do this, but you can, you can cut up carrots and take potatoes and, and, and quarter them, peel them and quarter them, and just cook them right around the brisket, and you'll get, you'll get a, a full meal right out of it. You can serve a kugel with it. Um, you can serve mashed potatoes. You can serve potatoes with it. Uh, you can, I mean, it's, it's almost endless. So. Uh, I, I, I'm not putting potatoes around it because usually on Rosh Hashanah we'll serve a kugel or a souffle or something of that nature, a special kind of a special rice dish. It's whatever you want to put on the side, you know, whatever starch, and then you probably also want a vegetable. Uh, cooked carrots go go nice with a brisket. Um, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts. Uh, almost any any green vegetable would, would be very good with it. Now the other thing you want to serve with it is wine. So what kind of wine should you serve with the brisket? Uh, all the bottles of wine I'm showing, uh, uh, that I'll show now, come through the FJMC Wine on the Vine program. Uh, these are all purchased through, through uh, israelwines.com, uh, FJMC code word, but I know a lot of clubs also sell it. So this one is a Domain Hertzberg. This is a, 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 it's a red reserve. Uh, it's a very nice, it's a, a nice wine. Uh, needs a little bit of time to breathe, but it's it's very good with brisket. The other two I recommend 
this is a Cabernet Sauvignon Tulip, uh, 2019. Uh, it's a very young wine, a very good wine. You can even serve this one a little chilled. It, it comes off very good with brisket, I've served it with brisket. It's a, it's a very nice bottle of wine, um, comes highly recommended. And then uh, this is uh, a Jezreel Valley. Jezreel Valley is a, a great winery. I, I've planted a number of vines in, in that vinery. Uh, it's actually on a, a, a more conservative kibbutz, uh, a Masorti kibbutz. This is, this is a blend. So this is um, Syrah and, and Cargan and, and a couple other grapes put together. But this is also a great, it's, it's not as complex uh, a wine and it's a great wine. You probably don't want to serve white wine with, with a brisket. But it's, these are both all nice and they're also very good for kiddish. So let's take a quick look at our, uh, at our sauce. It's starting to bubble up a little bit. So we're going to continue to stir it. Do uh, we see any more questions that have come in? So if you see the sauce now, it is basically broken down. I'll let it go a little bit longer and keep stirring every once in a while. Then I will put it into a, 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 a container for, uh, for Friday night. All right. Anybody have any other comments, questions, or otherwise? If not, I want to uh, say l'chaim to everybody, a happy and healthy year, a much better year. Um, I don't have my brisket, but I got my wine. So uh, uh, enjoy, you know, enjoy making brisket. Again, it's easy. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. The nice thing about it is you can prepare it in about five minutes, cook it for a couple of hours, take it out, and it's ready to go. But again, I like to do it over a couple of days. It makes the cutting of the brisket easier, and it makes the brisket a little bit more tasty. All right. Tom, that was terrific. I, that was terrific. You've gotten the, um, uh, all the recipes. Uh, I said, again, most people have their own recipes as well. Yeah. Um, I tried to uh, get one that was very easy and one was, that was a little bit more complicated. Great. If you got a smoker, smoke brisket is also very good. Yeah. All right, Danny, I'll throw it back to you. All right, hold on one second. Uh, okay. All right, everyone. So that was great. I, I said I had dinner and he made me hungry all over again. It was uh, really, really well done, well thought out, and um, very, very scrumptious. So I don't know why I'm echoing. Anyway, um, as I said in the beginning of this, I'm not sure, oh, there I am. Um, we're gonna have another one of these scheduled for Thursday, October 7th. Uh, that's during Sukkot. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you there. Everyone who's on this call is part of our affinity groups. So you'll be getting the emails. And thank you once again, Tom. It was a really, really outstanding, a lot of work and preparation went into that. Uh, it really looks delicious. It looks absolutely delicious. Everyone, Shana Tova. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, we'll see you the next time. And if anyone ever has a question about uh, how to get on or any technical issues, just reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to, to try to get you through this. Thank you, everyone. Good night, and Shana Tova.